A really good example of how additives can be fairly obvious in foods is salad dressings. Now, first up, if I make my own at home, all I'm going to put in is, you know, a bit of olive oil and vinegar. And then I always bung in a bit of mustard. And then just give it a good stir. And that does the job. No additives needed. Now, oil and vinegar don't mix. But the mustard in my dressing, A, tastes really good, but B, it acts as an emulsifier. And what that means is that there's a chemical in the mustard that bridges the gap between oil molecules and vinegar molecules that essentially repel each other and essentially makes my dressing into an emulsion. But that doesn't last very long. Now, as my salad dressing settles, you can see all the different components, the oil and the vinegar separating, and also all the mustard seeds have settled to the bottom. But if I show you an equivalent salad dressing that comes from a shop, there's no separation whatsoever and all the seeds are suspended throughout. It looks very different. But I need just one secret ingredient to get my DIY dressing bottle ready. Now, this is E415 or xanthan gum. And it's a very popular additive. It's used in hundreds of salad dressings and sauces. And it comes from this little bacteria, xanthomonas campestris. And it's what causes the black spots on broccoli and cabbage. And it uses this gum-like substance that it secretes to attach to the leaves of the vegetables. But when that gum is dried out, it looks like this. And if I add little bit to my dressing and stir. Look at that already. I can notice a bit of a difference. The gum further emulsifies the dressing, but also surrounds the molecules of oil and vinegar, stabilizing the mixture so that the oil and vinegar can't separate back out. But xanthan is also a thickener. It's also made my dressing a lot more viscous, and that means that all the mustard seeds are now sort of permanently suspended in my dressing, and suddenly, these two don't look that dissimilar anymore. Because it's so thick, I can even water it down, which not only makes it cheaper to produce, it also gives you a fraction of the calories per teaspoon. Xanthan is just one of hundreds of additives used in our food. Chemistry professor Andrea Sella is going to show me some of the most commonly used additives in mass-produced food, like this Victoria sponge cake. OK, so what are the challenges you know, do you have to face when you're making cakes on a mass scale? One of the things you're going to have to worry about is shelf life. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that if we leave a cake lying around, it's going to dry out. So, for example, there are things called humectants. These are really edible moisturizers. And a good example of this would be uh, glucose syrup. Humectants like glucose and glycerin keep the cake moist, but also stop mold growing and extend the shelf life. 